News Radio. NBC News on KCAA Loma Linda, sponsored by Teamsters Local 1932, protecting the future of working families, Teamsters1932.org. Opinions expressed in this program are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views or positions of any entities they represent. Find us on the web at mbradio.us. Good evening. Welcome to the Fran Dozier Show on KCAA Radio, 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCAA Radio.com website and mbrradio.us. We got a blessed show before we get started. Let's go. When I was in my mother's womb, I had a calling on my life to do something in the glory of God and marry it like a wife. Commit myself to his word and never be led astray. And when it's all over, when he comes, I'll be glad to see that day in the morning time. All right. Good evening and welcome to the Frondose Show on KCAA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM. Also streaming from the KCAA Radio.com website, the station that leaves no listener behind, plus MBR. That's right, MBR on Roku and all of their streaming platforms as well. So we're all over the place on the Frondose Show slash Sports Collective TV, media, and radio. Um, got an exciting show for you tonight, of course, as always. Um, so stay tuned for that. I got the deck full with the crew here. So we are going to have a, a nice talk tonight. Uh, always deal with some mental toughness, some mental health, some sickle cell trait talk, uh, what else, hydration, you know, military talk, all of that right here on the Frondose Show, the variety show. But tonight we're bringing on our sports collective media, TV, radio crew. So let me play these uh, PSAs and then we'll come back with the crew right here. Frondo's they show. Where's that other stuff at? Here we go. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, we were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. Comigo is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia, not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo through the VA or with a special veteran's discount code. Get ready for an epic collaboration as MB Radio and Patriot Radio join forces. These veteran-owned stations are uniting to bring you top-notch veteran-run podcasts along with your favorite classic rock music 24-7. Stay tuned for the ultimate radio experience that celebrates our heroes and plays the tunes that never get old. From engaging discussions to timeless hits, this partnership has everything you need for your listening pleasure. Don't miss out on this exciting new chapter in radio history as MB Radio and Patriot Radio come together to rock your world. All right, welcome back to the Frondose Show, a.k.a. Sports Collective TV, Media, Radio. Make sure you go get the apps, too. KCAA Radio has an app, and MB Radio also has an app. So make sure you go download those, and you can catch us streaming all across those platforms. Plus, if you're in the Inland Empire and you're in your vehicle and you got to get out, Grab your device, laptop, smartphone, type in KCA Radio, and you can catch us streaming right now from the website. All right. All right. Let me see. Uh, let, let me uh, let's see. What's up, man? What's up? What's up, man? <laughs> no introduction no more, huh? <laughs> yeah, no, no. You're a regular. No, you're done. 
you're done with the introductions. What's happening? How's it going? <laughs> this we is live. Not Emmanuel, the happiness coach. I just wanted to say what's up, everybody. No. <laughs> Yeah, what's happening, man? How you man, doing? Man, I'm good. I, I I heard you talk about mental toughness, and I was just like, yeah, that's a great conversation. Um, you sent that 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 uh that article to me, and I thought it was really powerful on what it really means. W uh, WDC issues, you know, what it looks like to have trait, and even today, like to to for people not to recognize what it looks like, um, and. I think that tells you that the conversation is still relevant. Yeah, no, it, it is, man. And, and we've got, I've got to be able to address those um, conversations. Um, very, very important. And um, I think there's an assumption, Peron. There's an assumption that because you are a, a man, the mental toughness that you are trying to build through, whether it be, you know, training um, or whether it be through, you know, sports, whatever, mm -hmm. that you are more of a man if you ignore all physical signs of weakness and interpretations of what physical signs of weakness look like. Yeah, I mean. There's a conversation. Is, is that a male issue or is that a human being flaw? It's, it's a male issue. Here's why I say that. Because I think that when you... It, yeah, there's a, there's, there's a definitely human issues around that, right? Mm -hmm. But I think that I think if you if you tell the truth, like there's an expectation when it comes to men that okay. you know if you're if you're in this space and let's say especially in things like the, the the article you sent me where it's like okay someone's in training for whether it be police training or army or whatever it is, mm -hmm. and the expectation is you can handle it. You're tough. That's that's really what the expectation is. Right. So. So if somebody says, I have, a, I have an issue that doesn't allow me to go this far, um, I, 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 I personally have gone through that. Now, you know my story. Yeah. But I, when I finished the Dr. Sebi uh, treatment and I went back to the gym because I was like, not back, really, for the first time in my life, you know, because I couldn't go to the gym before that. Mm -hmm. And I was going to the gym and I had a trainer. And I tried to explain to the trainer that, look, I'm coming from a, a history that's very different from other people. Most people think so don't come up and, and able to do this. You know, you know what the guy told me? Hmm. He was like, man, uh, nah, that's just an excuse. You're you're mentally weak. Yeah. It's still a conversation for all. It's like, because if you tell somebody, look, there are some things that I have to be careful for in order to live my life in a way because of a health issue because mm -hmm. they don't see the, the health issue on your face or on your body they don't realize that there's a real conversation around everybody has limits everybody has to be able to understand and that doesn't make you weak it makes you aware it makes you know yourself and so yeah mental toughness is a conversation that i think a lot of people struggle with and the reason why people struggle with mental toughness is because they think that mental toughness means ignoring or not be, being aware of the self. Because so, so, so when, 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 when you say, when I say mental toughness, right, I, I, I want to point to mental toughness from the aspect of the person who knows that they're dealing with, right? So with that mental toughness comes the self-awareness. Yeah, it, it comes to self self confidence. It comes to self esteem. It comes to self worth because just because you're dealing with a, a pre existing condition or you're born with its inherited gene or you're born with a, a type of disease, yeah. I I believe that gets in the way more than the 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 society's conversation about it. I have to have the world with all the strength. I know. To yeah. Have that to say, hey, you know what? I do. I have this inherited gene, and this is what it looks like, and to have the confidence and 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 be okay with the response of the person, right? Because yeah, this how you person. respond is going to be how I'm going to be able to educate you, sure, and make and have you aware. So that I, I, I know the conversation you're having because you and I have had it. Like it's, <laughs> it's so yeah. There is a part that a, as a person who lives with any kind of condition, right? I'm not yeah. even talking about me. I'm saying. A person yeah. who lives with a condition needs to be able to be okay with themselves so there's self-awareness to get there. Right. 
it still requires the 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 society to have an awareness as well because the interaction between so yes you can educate people you can tell people but if if someone is in, if, isn't even open to that interaction of like hey i'm trying to tell you something right yeah but, but everybody's not going to care what we care about no no and you don't well, have to have everybody to care but it is it is the responsibility of governmental entities of you know society uh, societal leaders let, let, let me be clear let me give you an example all right since you since you i'm glad you're asking this because this is important yeah because go ahead i ran so i'm gonna i'm gonna tell the story the way it happened to me a lot of people don't know this story because it's very personal and i don't really share it but um years ago i uh i was I was, you know, I was stopped by a police officer. I'm going to tell the short version of it. I don't know. If yeah, is. yeah, we got, we ain't got that much time. Yeah. Yeah. So I was stopped by a police officer um, and they were in the wrong. Let me just put that out there. They were completely in the wrong. That That's for sure. But because of time, I'm not going to go into it because it's really more complex. But um, so they stopped me, never got arrested because there was nothing to arrest me for. That's how wrong it was. Okay. But it was it was cold and they asked me to sit down on the sidewalk. So I sat down and I told them, I said, I can't sit here for too long. This was before I did the Dr. Savi and all the health changes that I've had. Yeah. So 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 they asked me to sit on the I, I'm like, I can't do that because if I sit here in this cold, I'm going to have a crisis. Yeah. They did exactly the opposite of what they should have done. I ended up in the in, in the hospital. Then they wanted me to sign papers to say that what they did that uh that essentially to take the blame so i wouldn't sign the papers i was like no because you know that what what happened this was actually you guys yeah like like so i'm giving you this very short version yeah so so i and i look back on that and i'm like do you realize that that experience didn't have to happen if there was a training around how to treat someone with with sickle cell what it means it didn't have to happen so that is a, that is a real thing that happens to people it, am i saying that uh that the government uh is responsible for everything that happens with sickle cell no i'm saying if if i had said i'm having a heart attack they would have had to have a different response but and I, and I I agree with you. But there's also a part of this conversation that that there's so many chronic illnesses. There's so many different sure. things that people are dealing sure. with that we can't leave that up to the government system to take care of for us. So I'm we have to be the up, ones. I'm they need to be involved as well. I, it should be a two way street because if you look at it, just to be fair, to be totally fair, Quran, um, you know when you look at when you look at the responsibility of 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 say the police right when you look at that because i'm thinking about that that particular article you said when you look at their responsibility right we do have expectations we do have expectations on them being able to understand certain things are they going to be good and 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 right on point for everything that happens no but there should be some there should be some expectations of sort of like standards of how you run certain things and if they're not there yes it's our responsibility to require that of them so so the article that you that he's addressing is there was a police cadet who um in denver colorado who was going through the program and collapsed uh hit his head they forced him up to continue brought him to the ems because he was saying he was having leg cramps the EMS cleared him and he went back to doing the police training and then collapsed and then ended up in the hospital. And now he was, he lost his legs, legs amputated, right? So yes, there, there, there is, and he said, and he told him, the article says that he told him that he knew he was a trait carrier, mm -hmm. right? So, so there's a part of that, that he made them aware my part of that is the EMS part. 
Me too. The, EM, the EMS part, because if 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 they would have paid attention, if they would have known they've been educated of the symptoms of the signs of trade exertion with rhabdomyolysis, maybe they would have had a, a better. He might have his legs. Today. He might he might have his legs today. Same with the police force, police department. They they could have also done a better job, possibly to ensure that his health. And then and then there's a level of responsibility on him himself, right? Because if he knew he was a trade carrier going into the police force academy with those strenuous trainings, also, I'm, I don't know for sure if he is from Denver or how long he lived in Denver, but it says that he lived in Denver. So already with sickle cell trade, with my knowledge and understanding, with sickle cell trade, living in a, at a climate like Denver, Colorado, like his body was already under a level of stress, just living in the environment. And so some people don't even know that. Like, yeah, you might look good on the outside, but what's happening to your organs when you're living in an elevation like Denver, Colorado? Right. So I'm saying that there's a lot of different things going on in that case. Sure. It, it What hurts me is the fact that he had to lose his legs. And also, if it was rhabdomyolysis, that is a result of rhabdo because when rhabdo happens and you experience renal failure, then there's no circulation getting to those right. legs. Right. Plus the legs are swelling because there's no release because the kidneys are, are failing. Right. So the body, for some people, they their, their limbs swell up. So when you look at his picture, I was trying to bring up his picture. When you look at his picture, it's like, oh my gosh. Like for me, it was like, that's gotta be connected with rhabdo because how they cut his arms open, I'm sure to relieve the pressure of the swelling. The when did that happen? Uh, that doing? was that was the article came out in um, July 28th, 29th, some time frame around there. I'm trying oh, to pull it up here. Yeah. Oh, yeah. This that's that's like most recent. The reason I ask is because I, I what I said earlier, which is the conversation still matters. We still have a lot of education to do in this area of people understanding. And I agree with you, Fran, you you already know, I agree with you that we do have a conversation to have where there's an yeah. inside conversation to have with patients. But the outside conversation is what do we do inside of these systems to bring awareness that lets people know that if, if I'm, and, and I, and I choose not to say there are in, there are so many diseases that, you know, it could happen. And the reason I choose not to say that is because I really believe that there are enough of us who struggle with the issue that it should be at the top. We are the largest when it comes to sickle cell disease and sickle cell trait, the largest, uh, you know, blood disease that exists in the world. No, it, I, 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 I understand. I understand what you're saying. But at, at and the I, end, and at like the I said, time. I think there is an internal work. At the same this, time, this so, yeah, I'm trying to see if I can pull this up here. Sure. Um, so yeah, so I, you know, I, I'm not negating the other side of the conversation. I just want to make sure that when we talk about these things, we talked about them in terms of, uh, you know, movement forward, so that we prevent people from having to lose their legs in the process and going through, you know, exertion where it's like we didn't know about this. Right. You know what I mean? Like, no, no, like that's that's not okay. When I okay. think of, um, you know, yeah, I see that. That's that's hard. Well, this is. Let me play this. That's heartbreaking. So that's that's him now mm -hmm. after that injury. Mm -hmm. And um, if you look at the scars, I mean, you look at his arms, like to me, that's rhabdo because they had to do that surgery to relieve the swelling, I imagine. And that, the that, crazy part about that is there's nothing that, you know, no matter how much money you win in a lawsuit. Oh, yeah. Yeah. There's, there's, yeah, there's, there's no money that's going to take care of that. No. Yeah, there's no money. No. So it, it, it puts you in the space of saying, we've got to do better in these systems. These systems are, are ignoring, and I, I, I almost want to say on purpose, 
His wife. No, no, no. I'm not going to let you get away with that. I'm not going to let you get away with that. I'm not going to let you get away with that. You're talking about the story. I'm not going to let you get away with that. Listen to what I'm saying. On purpose. Because there has been conversations about reversing this. And a lot of these systems are set up so that what doesn't have the money doesn't get the attention. That's how the system's set up. Yeah, uh, but I'm, I'm, I got my sports show segment coming up next. Yeah, even, even, even in the sports world environment, coaches, that, that's, that goes back to the mentality of the sports. I hear coaches, you. water's weakness. What are you going to do? You're going to go hard in the fourth quarter or you're going to go try to get some water? That's, that's, that's a, a developing the toughness. But for some people, water that's is a necessity. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. That's so, so how do, that's the conversation for me that has for, is, is my responsibility to get out there and have that discussion with the law enforcement, with the military, with the coaches. Yeah. Because, yeah. Some, because it's not just sickle cell trait. We're one of a hundred of different red blood sure. cells that can experience the I can same give thing that to you. This I can give that experience. to you. I can give that to you. There's a, and that's why I said there's two sides to the story. Yeah. There's a yeah. responsibility for the person to, to be verbal. I, right. I, I think that no matter how verbal you are in some situations, if there's no training, you lose, you lose the, the, the freedom to be able to even say, because sometimes a person will say something and because the system is not trained to see it as, as, as a priority, it, it, it doesn't get picked up by, by whoever it is. And that's EMS. That's like that's EMS, that's medical doctors. And what, what I was running through and I know you got to go, so we're not, we'll pick this back up, but, yeah. but, but when I think about the intersection between, uh, 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 ment- I mean, health and mental health, we have some real disparities and it's not just with sickle cell, by the way. But oh yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 It's the, 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 the intersection between mental health and our health systems, there are some real issues. The, the that- biggest issue that I see that I'm going to point to is with mental health. We spend or they spend a lot. They get billions of dollars to talk about mental health, run some PSAs bring up a story and then go home while people are suffering, not getting the help. So we can talk about mental health or we yeah, got to talk, we we gotta talk from it yeah, right? yeah. and let people yeah, come and share their stories and get real, like mm-hmm. create the space to, Hey, you know what? I, I, I need some help, but without that lack, with that lack of confidence, the lack of courage, the, the judgmental aspects Absolutely. of the world, then I'm not going to say nothing. Absolutely. But they're making billions of dollars talking about it doing these campaigns Absolutely. and then it's a wrap and then we're over here people are like well, well who i'll I give you an to? example um you know physicians we don't think about this physicians nurses uh, a, a a therapist when i say therapist i don't mean mental health therapist but us too but 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 i'm talking about physical therapists therapists that work within the hospital settings yeah do you know that the level of of suicide rates are so high among physicians because of stigmas, just like we talk about stigmas in other diseases like sick cell disease, there's stigmas for mm-hmm. them to actually speak out and say that the systems are so heavy on them that it's causing them, whether it be depression, anxiety, or whatever else they may be experiencing. Because the moment that you experience that within certain circles, it's considered the end of your career. They may never yeah. say Yeah, well, yeah, exactly. Yeah, that, but, and that's one of the fears, right, of being discriminated against. Like, that, like so, I said, there's a whole, but, it, but again, it goes back to my conversation with, with, with veterans and athletes. You, what's the value of life? So then you got like this, like this cadet, if, if maybe he would have understood the value of his life around his condition, maybe he would have picked a different job instead of, you know, get, going to try to be a police officer. Sure. Right. So, so a lot of times we pick jobs out of, out of, out of a survival state of mind. Just- yeah. I wouldn't. To, 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 to make a better quality of life, but also we're dealing with our health that might not allow that quality. So might, you might, hey, you know what I can say? Go talk to God and find out why you were born. Find out your purpose in life. Maybe okay. that might be what you have your conversations around, sure. right? Then you can have a fulfilling job 
that doesn't bring on this level of stress and, and on your body and on your life because you pick up a job out of survival think, state. I don't think that the systems I don't think that the systems are concerned with our level of stress. And yet the level of stress produce a lot of these mental health issues that we experience. Yeah. I, so there's I, that's why I said the cross between health, like like actual physical health and mental health. Yeah. That, that, you know, our health systems and our mental health systems, we have some real things. to I, People with. just need a, a space to have a space to tell the truth of what they're There's dealing even with. even more than that, Fran. Even more than that. We need to do that. We also need to look at the systems. Well, the, system, if, the systems are... you I'm, keep producing the, the systems that produce the stress and then tell people, he, go find a space for it. You go back, but it's like returning to the same thing. So, yeah, but we have, there's a level of, so you're saying the system, right? Okay, so I system, give you the system, system. but it's, but it's, it's not one system. system. But, it, but if we help people develop their, their, their self yeah. with some strength and some confidence, some courage, then when I go to that system, I'm not bringing all of my stressors with me. I'm able to look at the system for what it's worth and navigate the system. We can, you can navigate the system. Run. The way I that the system you. is. I hear you, but we cannot negate the fact that the systems themselves are uh, uh, incentivizing people to stay within the broken spaces. Yeah, and we, got, and, and we got to look at that. We got to look at that. And we we going we gonna how, talk about how that. are the systems creating this? Next episode, we're gonna talk about a, a system, so we can point to a system. Sure, sure. System That's easy. To is the label. If I show up with the, with the system with peace of mind and, and, and understanding, then I can go up against that system and navigate. And guess what? I might not need that system. I might think I need the system in my survival state. But guess what? If I'm up, 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 up to what I'm about my life about, then that system, you know what? Unless I'm going to go run for office and change that system or go vote to have that system change, the system is what it is. So it's up to me on how I show up to that system and navigate that for I'm my life. That personal responsibility. Oh, my, that's a level there are two sides to the story. That's all, all right. I'm we're saying. gonna get to your side next episode. <laughs> no, that's not my. There are two sides. I yeah. agree. <laughs> this right. is uh, that's his uh, Instagram right there. Uh, make sure you check him out. Uh, and his dot uh, com right there, Alan Emanuel Therapy dot com. I appreciate your time, man, for hanging out tonight. Yeah, yeah. always yeah. great. Enjoy the rest of the show. <laughs> oh man, we about to get it in. This is 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 uh, high school sports. You know, football season. Do it. Crack. So I got my crew in, man. So. All right. All right, man. Thank you. Have a good night. All right. You too. All right. Again, this is the Fran Dozier Show on KCA Radio 106.5 FM, 1050 AM, NBR Radio.us. Make sure you check us out, all the platforms. Um, we're coming back with the Sports Collective TV, media, and radio segment. Got the crew here on the deck. Um, and we're going to get in. So let me, what I got to do there? Oh, we're going to play this right here. The Fran Doze Show, KC Radio. Introducing J&J Beard Co., your go-to destination for high-quality, handmade, and natural beard products. Our family-owned business, based in New Jersey, prides itself on using the finest ingredients to bring you premium products that will elevate your grooming routine. Each product is carefully crafted with love and expertise, ensuring that you get the best care for your beard. Treat yourself to the luxury of J&J Beard Co. and experience the difference that true quality and craftsmanship can make for your beard. Join the J&J Beard Co. family today and unleash the full potential of your facial hair with our exceptional products. Find them on the web at jjbeardco.com. That's jjbeardco.com. Hey, what's up, man? How you doing? I'm blessed, my brother. How you doing? I'm good, man. I'm good. Hey, did you see the game last night? Oh, that was a real game. But did you see the shot? I lost money from that oh, shot. Oh, man, that shot was cold, I man. I it, but it was good. Damn. What's in those jeans? Mm. You really want to know? I do. Yeah. Exhaustion, muscle spasm, asthmatic issues, Unexpected Sickle Cell Trade Crisis. Damn, are you serious? 
When I was young, I found out I had sickle cell trait. My moms told me, but I ain't have no knowledge of it. But when I got older, I had a child, and the doctor told me my daughter has sickle cell trait. Do you know the facts that both parents have sickle cell trait? There's a 50% chance the child may have the trait, and 25% chance the child may have the disease. Hey, that's what's the count. Do you know that 2.5 million people in the United States have sickle cell trait? 300 million people globally? I didn't find out I had sickle cell trait until I was in the Army 10 years. Next thing you know, I had a sickle cell trait exertion site. Sickle cell? I thought that was a black gene or something. Nah, man, the Latin community is number two. One out of 36,000 babies are being born with sickle cell disease. You could be Caucasian, Mediterranean, European. You gotta know your bloodline, man. There is an inherited gene in our community that has been forgotten. The name is sickle cell trait. WDCONSCT, also known as What's the Count, is out to bring awareness, education, and prevention to people all over the globe. Want more information? Call us now at 323-215-5384 or visit www.wdconsct.org. All right, welcome back to the Frondosi Show on KCA Radio, 106.5 FM, 10.50 AM. Also, MBR Radio, make sure you check us out there. We're on Roku TV as well, so make sure you go to Roku, search MBR Radio or MB Radio, and you can find us, download the, the, the channel, and then launch it, and you can watch us and my veteran brothers and sisters live on the network as well. All right, so let me get my sports crew up here. Oh, but before I do that... You know, I'm, I'm, I'm working this stream right out right now. So um, here we go. So my uncle is performing in Atlanta um, August 25th. So if you're in the ATL, make sure you go check out my uncle who's performing. He's a guitarist, saxophonist, but he's going to be doing a, a tribute to Stevie Wonder um, at his concert there. So make sure you go to my Instagram Fran Dozier show, and the link is in there. You can um, get your tickets there if you're an ATL. All right. I appreciate y'all for that. So, all right. The moment you've been waiting for. Now, for those of you, <laughs> uh, this is my sports crew. We, we do a sports collective TV, media, radio. Um, back in the day, I've, I don't know, I've, I've had about five shows all at once. Um, and so, uh, sports for me, Sports was always important. I was a huge sports fan, but prior um, to my um, injuries in the military and my depression and anxiety, I lost a lot of interest in things in life um, at the state of, you know, wanting to take my life and life was over. And sports was a huge piece of it that I lost. And in 2010, I started a sports show on a blog talk radio with on a sports log. And that sports show really kept me alive. I mean, that's why I'm in front of you today, even on, on the platform like this, because I found that sports, we created that sports show and it kept me alive. And, and so living into the each week of that episode, as nervous as I was drinking uh, cranberry juice and vodka the hour before to try to kill my nerves because I didn't know what I was doing. But my guy sports log, um, he was in Boston. He's in Boston still. Uh, we did a sports show every week for two hours, and that kept me connected um, to the athletic world. Um, and then when I discovered that my sickle cell trait was connected to athletes, um, that also connected me back to sports from my awareness. And then the mental toughness, dealing with my own mental health and mental toughness and being a basketball player. I kind of forgot that I was an athlete. And so remembering that I would played basketball outside of my military career, that that's what that's what keeps me connected to sports. So I don't watch a lot of highlights. I don't watch a lot of sports. Um, but my part of this conversation is the mental toughness, it's the mental health, it's the hydration, it's the sickle cell trait awareness, and the other red blood cell conditions that athletes can happen because athletes have died from this same experience that I did in the military that I had in the military. So, um, so when you don't have that interest like you normally like you used to, what do you do? You surround yourself with people <laughs> who who, who still does right and so these are my this is these are my friends that we yeah we're, we're on the radio together but these are my guys and they allow me to stay connected to the sports world so this is our sports collective tv media radio crew what's up coach 
What up, what up, what up, what up, what up? What's Rob? going on, What's up, man? Rob? <laughs> this is the crew. Me, man. Oh, yeah. Everything's cool, man. Everything's cool. Oh, Rob, you got to unmute yourself, Rob. Oh, my bad. Uh, yeah. There it is. What's happening? Yeah, now I know I got to do my voice like that, too. <laughs> <laughs> you got to make it deep yeah. for, the, for the radio. You got to get your radio voice in, You got to get your radio voice ready. TV, TV voice in, coach. We, we try to, hey, we, we try to marinate the mamas. <laughs> get their sons out. <laughs> the mamas and the sons out. You crazy <laughs> shit, man. What's up, though, man? What's What's up, you don't want to spend no money on no unofficial, right? Well, let me tell you something. <laughs> <laughs> All, All right, man. So, oh, here we are. Real, real. <laughs> here we are. KCA Radio, MBR Radio, um, Sports Selective TV Media Radio. Um, Coach, man, introduce yourself. Rob's been on here last week, but introduce yourself, man. He's been on here, you know, doing his thing, man. Coach yeah. Will, man. Coach Will Lang, man. Coach Will 247 on all, you know, social media platforms and outlets. Uh, man, you know what we're here to do, you know. Cool, Yes, man. sir. Rob, reintroduce. Oh, you know who it is. It's your boy, Robert Lamar. <laughs> You know, trying to go baby face and all. Look at is that, I, I was trying hair. to see what I thought it was the lighting at first. I'm trying hair. to see what is that. Uh, I, I, I spooked myself that, like doing this, but I'm getting a lot of po positive feedback on, on the ground, so I'm <laughs> good with that. <laughs> Took off some years, huh? Man, this is man. The way I look is like, man, that's when Will first saw me, man. <laughs> like, yeah. like, 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 when y'all was bro. playing against, when y'all was playing against each other, man, yeah. dude, that goes back yeah. to junior high. <laughs> yeah, 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 right. man. Uh, we just decided though. Uh, there's so much good stuff happening. I mean, football season starting. Will has practically got into the to the tail end of his journey with him, you know, getting his son to the point where he's going to be ready for the next level. Mm -hmm. So for him to let us know, I'm going to let him announce that. I'm not going to steal his thunder, but I'm extremely excited for. Is that announcement coming tonight? I, I don't know. It's up to <laughs> Coach Will. <laughs> Coach Will. But right. I'm extremely excited for his for Arion senior year, man. This is gonna be a movie. So yeah, man. Congrats, congrats, coach, to getting yeah. your son to this level. It's not easy. It's not easy. It's, it's a lot not. of free work, like travel, <laughs> sacrifices, man. and for the simple fact that you have him in a position to win. Man, kudos to you, man. If I had a hat, I'd tip it to you, bro. Man, as long as it's not a 49er hat, I appreciate it. <laughs> ain't that something. You know. uh, yeah. 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 It's been a mission. It's been a mission. It's been a journey. And uh, we just trying to complete it out the right way. You know, um, making the move was important. Uh, we should have made the move last year. Um you know, things are, are, are in a good space, though. A perfect space with a phenomenal program, uh, well-recognized, known for winning championships and having great players go to big-time programs. Um, and he's came in and made an immediate impact on that program. So I feel like um, he's going to be able to just have, a you know, a big senior. He left a lot on the table to make this decision. So... He he's definitely got to go get his bang for his buck. You know what I mean. And he has to really uh get out there and do some things. They got a pretty great schedule, um, and and him playing both ways still is is a great thing. Like you know, nothing's changed. Then yeah. uh, they've accepted him with open arms and made him feel a part of the family. Um, it's the program. It was the program that got me. You know, more than anything, it was the program that got me. Those coaches, they've been doing it. They've been around. Um, it, it's exciting, man. So, you know, he is uh gonna go finish out his senior year at Los Alamitos High School. Oh, dang! He he announced it. <laughs> he announced. It. I thought he gonna keep it. <laughs> you feel me? We gonna do it that way. We gonna um, do it that way. 
Yeah, man, it's important, man, you know, yeah. um, to just have them around good people that understand what the mission is um, and how to, you know, get there. You know, people that's going to push them, hold them accountable uh, and help them grow. People that want to see them grow, you know, yeah. that, that, those are all big things. And, um, you know, we made that move. And, and then now it was, you know, once everything was handled, now we're able to talk a little bit more about it and you know his off season was crazy you know playing with fast houston playing on playing on nfl network um you know overtime at the ot7 tournament he made some huge plays he had play of the week out there i mean he has a big he, he has a you know his trajectory is is in the right direction so um we just want to have a big year man we just want to close out big close out strong keep the recruitment on point um, until we can, you know, sign on that, you know, dotted line. Shit. Mm. Let me ask you a question, Will, because, you know, I got a 10 year old right now who, you know, he's playing in the same park that I grew up in, you know, Lakeview Terrace Rack. And, you know, I left a pretty good legacy over there. You know, we got banners, we hang banners up there. Hang banners. And, you know, um, you always want, your son to be better than you that's that's what we strive for keep it a buck sorry i'm better than you (laughs) 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 and so you said that yeah i i i I just feel like i was a different type of monster i think this i'll tell you this i'll tell you this arian i just said this to him i said man your mission you know i'm proud of you because your mission has been you know, you play some big time football. You know, I went to Chatsworth. I went to San Fernando. Yeah. You know, no di- city ball was lit at that time. Yeah, it wrong. was. And I played some NFL talent. Yeah. But at this level and at this phase of, of the football, you know, high school football, he's played against the most premier talent. He's played with the most premier talent as well. You know, he yeah. started off his first year playing with Floyd Chalk and Kevin Green and and, 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 you know, and Larry Turner Gooden and all those boys, right? Then he played with Aaron Butler. He played with, you know, DeJon Stanley, his cousin. You know, he's played with some great talent. And then this year he gets to play alongside of, uh, you know, some, some great guys with Esparza committed to Cal and uh, Tron committed to SC and, you know, a phenomenal defense. Oh, the defense is crazy. And, uh, man, the Don't kid forget just, Terry, man. Terry is a – Oh, man, no, oh game, no, 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 no. Terry – Terry is is oh man, you can't even think about forgetting Terry. He's man. a kid that just makes plays after play after play. And summer league, summer ball, the kid is scoring touchdown after touchdown. So you know, um, um, amazing players. And then what I love most, and before I jump off the topic, is the character. You know, the character of the, uh, of the team, the yeah. makeup of the program. Uh, those kids are, are are great, man. Those kids are. You know they carry themselves with with, with respect. Um, it's just a, it's a, it's a great thing, and it's diverse. It's very very diverse. You know I, I appreciate that as well. Yeah. Sweet yo. That's wild, man. Sweet. Yeah, man. So no, man. I don't know if he's better than me yet, man. I think he, I think, <laughs> I think, he's not I gonna think, admit that publicly. I think I'm Jordan, and he might. And he, oh, and he LeBron, and he LeBron, and, he LeBron and Kobe. Whichever one you want to pick that you think is right there with Jordan, he LeBron or Kobe. I'm I'm Jordan. He LeBron and Kobe. <laughs> no, nah, man. The older I get, I look back and I'm like, you know, I was fast. Uh, I had great routes. I had hands. I could cover. Um, but you know, he can really do it all. Um, you know, as much as I say, and, and a lot of people feel like, yeah, we we could do it all. Uh, he's proved it, you know, on both sides of the ball that he could do it all. The only thing I say is that, man, like, when it comes to a speed demon, it's a certain type of talent to take a quick slant, 75 yards, which I have <laughs> seen you done. <laughs> That's different. <laughs> hey, that became, a, that became a regular thing for, for like, a couple of weeks. They were – Hit him, with, hit him with another slant. It was either a fade or a slant. You know what Man. I mean? Coach was throwing me a fade or a slant, and I'm going 75, I'm going 80. Uh, that, that's what I mean, though. So I think that that's where um, we separate a little bit. I think that um, 
I feel like maybe in that department, like my top end speed was crazy. You know, yeah. I, I can honestly say that like I, my top end speed was crazy. It, it was wasn't stupid. like it, was, it wasn't you. normal. You know, <laughs> <laughs> I, I really you know had top end speed that you know the the track runners you know yeah. feared. Like you know yeah. they knew that what time it was when 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 we lined it up. So whether it was the football field or the track, um, my my speed was definitely one of my biggest separations i think he has a balanced game you know yeah, i think yeah, he yeah. definitely has i think he i think he has better routes i think my route game and concept is is is, is fire but i think <laughs> he has better routes like he understands you know what i'm saying it's i can agree with that to see you know and, and he's a modern he's a modern player you know what i'm saying yeah. I, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a he's a modern player so he does modern things, you know. I'm, I'm still like, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he he was more balanced, but you got to understand, this is what he was has been trained to do. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, right. right so right, basically, right, it's right. just like you trained him to be like this double edged sword, yeah. and that's what's dope yeah. about it. It's just like you know, yeah. see, the problem with you, with you is when you're so fast like that, you really don't need to do a lot. Right. But the problem <laughs> right, is, right, right. somebody should have been here. To basically say, well, you still got to because you were able to get yeah. away with it, make it easy, and right, that's what right, separates right, right. you from training right. your son to make sure that he yeah. has all of that. You know, yeah, those details. Yeah, yeah definitely, no doubt, definitely, no definitely. Doubt. That 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 was the difference in me being who I was and being, you know, a blue chip back, like what we yeah. called a blue chip back then. You know? Yeah, they call no them four star, five star. They call them four star and five star now. We used to call them blue chips. <laughs> man, don't age us, man. You are aging us, bro. Yeah, <laughs> man, blue chips and, you know, white chip. What do you rank? You know, y'all got your letters in the mail this week, you know. The, the good days, the good days, you know what I'm saying? But, yeah, man, I'm, I'm really excited to talk a little bit about uh, the preseason rankings, man, and what we've seen a little bit about um, what, what's to come. I know I don't care to uh, over elaborate on any one team, but I just think uh, they're, they're, it's football season's here, fellas, and they need to hear the sports collective media, you know, POV, and uh, hear a little bit about, you know, what we think about these rankings that continue to come out year after year. And it seems to be the same teams at the top and at the bottom. So, so, so with that conversation, uh, you know, modern day seems to be around every year. Robert Lamar, is that is that true or false? Oh, it's absolutely true. Um, and for what they're saying down there in Santa Ana, that this might be their best team since the Bryce Young years. That's mm-hmm. what they're saying. Or, yeah. And if that's the case, then watch out. I mean, you see number 15 right there. That's Chris Henry's son, Chris Henry Jr. And I believe some publications have him ranked as the number one wide receiver in the country. Hmm. Um, yeah. Looks Five just like his father. Um, yes, it does. They're, they're just – I mean, with modern day, it's just like, do you got to be a genius to talk about modern day? Do you got to – like, do you not know they're three deep in, like, every position? <laughs> <laughs> it's like you right. know, we don't gotta make this seem like this is something that's rocket science. They're three right. deep everywhere, <laughs> definitely. And um, definitely. they have a really tough game with um Bishop Gorman. But if if this team gels, it's gonna be hard to beat this team. Like simple as that. Like it, they just seem like they're pretty deep throughout everywhere. And when it all comes down to it. There's so much talent in Southern Cal, but you're going to win championships in the trenches, and that's what separates them. You know, they got Tom Tom, who I believe committed to Utah, I believe. It's just like, it's just, I'm getting, I'm not going to say I'm getting tired of it, but I'm getting tired of it. (laughs) It's like, man, it's like, they offer so coach. much. Yeah. You yeah, know, Van Poole. Right? Hey. Now, the funny part is that was that's actually what scares me with them. And I'm going to say this. Long Beach Poly always had the top talent in the country when Laura was there. Mm. Some way, somehow, Laura would figure out how to <laughs> lose some big games. 
Mm. Mm -hmm. All right. We'll we'll see if these teams are so loaded to the point where he can't lose these games. Right. Let's let's address another one before we get out of here, which is always seems to be, and we know a couple cats uh, that just left there. Uh, Bosco, what it was, why, why, but y'all got a a Bosco, man. Nothing but love for Bosco, but um, a lot of people are leaving, and it seems like they're going to what is it? Warring and losingers, I heard it's the top destination for Bosco Tread Treadways. Uh, a lot, I, um, I've seen what I've seen uh, a lot of Bosco players. They've hit Warren. Uh, th- let me just start with saying <laughs> there, a lot of players are returning home. Oh, so you had the kid, you know, guys who. Left Bosco, went back to, you know, Centennial or Sarah or, you know, some of those type of programs. Bosco, uh, or, or, you know, li- leaving there, like he talked about going over to Warren uh, and, and programs that are local to the area still. Oh. Uh, they're, they're, they, you know, Bosco is a phenomenal program. They'll never, I, I don't think that they'll ever not be a great program. They have a great staff, but something did shake up over there where you had several players, you know, check out. Even had a young, uh, some of the young freshmen who were the up and coming freshman kids, um, you know, transferred out. Kid left, went back to Carlsbad. Uh, you know, he's over at Carlsbad, two way starter now. Uh, you know what I mean? So opportunities were out there. I think what it was with some kids, but then they also got in some kids. They got some guys in from Los Al. They got some guys in from uh, Servite. They, you know, they, they, you know, they, so they, you know, it's kind of like a, a push and pull. But they have their their core, and they are going to be a great team. Did the check bounce for certain kids or something? <laughs> I don't know. Let's, let's, I'll say this: I want to see how I want to see how long they stay at the top of the rankings this year. What 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 mm-hmm. about Centennial? Anybody got anything about Corona Centennial football? Rob? Number one quarterback in the state, <sighs> Mister Hassan. <laughs> Hassan is that kid right in the there. middle right there. Oh, is all that in a bag of chips? <laughs> Mr. Longstreet, who USC is doing their 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 hardest to try to get away from A and M, um, that seems like that is modern day's toughest challenge. Um, they are the number two ranked team in the in the state, and they annually play modern day, annually to, to open the season. So that could be a dog fight, or it could be controlled by one or the other. But history tells us recently that these two teams might meet in the playoffs. Mm-hmm. And it's going to be real when that happens. So um, this is probably the best Centennial team that they've had in maybe like the last, like, probably like, um, should probably five years, I say. This, yeah, team, is, this team is deep. Mm-hmm. Centennial looks really, really good. And their system mm-hmm. is elite. You know, the only thing I don't like about Centennial you could have a talented running back that's going to get 2,000 yards, and they're going to say that, um, he's not that good because the system does this practically for everybody. Mm, yeah. It's an excellent system, but, man, Centennial is going to be really damn good this year. So, ladies and gentlemen, those of you that are interested in sports with us, um, the collective will be back on a weekly basis coming up, so just stay tuned for that. At Sports Collective uh, Media on Instagram, Facebook as well. Uh, I got to play this last PSA. I appreciate y'all fellas for hanging out tonight. Again, KCA Radio, AM, FM, uh, MBR Radio on Roku. Uh, We're all over TikTok platforms, Twitch. Uh, Shouts out to the the MBR station and uh, KCAA. We appreciate you for tuning and listening. Follow up, follow up, follow up, follow us, man. Let's run this thing up. Let's go. Let's go. All right. Uh, Again, thanks for tuning in to the Frondose Show on KCA Radio. 106.5 106.5 FM, 10:50 AM, and streaming at kcaradio.com. After the show, the platforms, uh, Spotify, iHeart, wherever you get your podcast, the show will be there as well. I appreciate you tonight. Some of us still carry the burden of battle. It threatens to drown us in our everyday lives. In battle, we had our weapons and combat gear to keep us safe, to keep us confident. But when we returned home, We were not armed with weapons and gear to cope with our own minds. I was lucky to find my combat gear, my mental weapon, and it's called Comigo. 
Calmago is a drug-free device that allows you to achieve calm in less than three minutes. In moments of anxiety, stress, anger, panic, or insomnia, not with medication, but rather by activating the parasympathetic nervous system through breathing regulation and multisensory stimulation. A recent study has shown that Comigo decreases PTSD and anxiety levels in veterans, helping those who are suffering and having a long-lasting effect. Visit Comigo.com to learn how you can get Comigo.